Welcome back to Banner Saga, where Rook questions what's on your mind. How well do you know the people traveling with us? How many strangers are in the caravan now? Who are you worried about? I've been watching folks since I joined you. They're companions from Skogar. They're loyal. I mean, it seems pretty clear that they died to protect you. I suppose I'd do the same. What about the Varl? You don't even know half these warriors. You're telling me they have no problem following a man's orders now? After everything that's happened at Einartoft? Now that they're willing to fight, it's worth the risk. Until the moment that it's all gone wrong. Okay, he's... he's... Yeah, he's questioning my authority. He wants something. What happens the first time the Varl don't want to do what you tell them? If Krumer gave the word, I guarantee at least half would follow. Let's be honest, they could take this caravan by force at any time if they wanted to. You may have a point. That's why we're having this chat, Rook. They're not the biggest problem, though. There's a mender with us. A mender who pulls lightning out of the sky and tells us what to do and where to go. Myself, I think we lucked out when his mentor didn't show up in Seegerholm. Ivan's just the apprentice. What in the depths is his master capable of? Think about it, Rook. What do you really know about Ivind? I heard they found were found practically dead in the middle of nowhere when the dredge started showing up. Then an enormous serpent shows up at Einertop after tearing the world in half. Takes one look at Ivind and bolts. Suddenly they need our help, instead of the Mender Council. How does that make any damn sense? Well, you, you, got, you got a few points there. There's some crazy shit going on. Points you should have made on your own. I'm grateful for what you have done to get us this far, Rook. But it's always been about trust. I think it's time to part ways, so to speak. Nothing special. Okay, I never used him anyways. Suddenly you gasp for air. When you look down, Onef is holding a knife buried deep in your ribs. Bastard! Take him down! And whatever minions he's assembled. Your vision blurs and blood fills your sight. You gasp again. There's a bird whistle and the camp becomes a blur of motion. Onef's fighters from the Frostvillar leap into action, cutting people down. Oh, 12 Clansmen. As Oddleaf turns to fire on the men, Onef runs her through and pulls the blade from her back without even breaking his stride. She drops like a sack of flour. Or potatoes. Onif heads straight for Alette. Not Alette too. Freezes in Bruttenbrow Terror. Oddleaf, not good. You rise to your feet through the pain. Oddleaf is dead. No. She's my true love. Somehow, you find the strength to cleave the nearest traitor in two, but you can't find the breath to shout. You think your lung might be punctured. Onif clutches Alette's wrist amid the commotion, tosses her bow aside, and pulls her into the deep woods. Her eyes meet yours across the campsite. No, her lips say, though you can't hear the words. A dozen men appear between you as Ivor steps into view, as fearsome as you've ever seen him. Well, he, he gotta die now, I suppose. Ekiel, this might be your chance to prove that you are reliable. We'll get an archer still. Uh, Gunorf. And I have no renown to upgrade it. Well, oh, this unit has points to spend. And they go there. What? is going on here he has eight points to spend that's amazing build him a little bit differently use root promotion okay so they're not sitting with points to spend just making sure and she doesn't have anything on her right now she could use a little strength dodge. Let's give her a little dodge action. Strength res ooh. Strength resist. This is two strength versus strength resist. Two strength will save you from like one good hit, but that could save you for if you get hit multiple times, so 
Yeah, let's switch that out for you, buddy. And what's he rocking at the moment? He's got the armor, strength, will. We can get you something better. He's nice level three. His movement, armor, strength, and will. Ah, that was pretty good. I'll go with it. I want to get something like this, I feel is pretty good. We're surrounded. It's not actually his character. Okay. This is their main concentration. She's a third. Position Rook here. Position our guy. Our boy over there. B. Good night, honey. You done? Yeah, I wonder what is the better way to go on that. So we're just making very short work. Oh, well, that's that's not too bad. Too bad it will be the last arrow you ever fire. Oh. We're all so far undamaged, so you might as well just do some mending. Level one. Full up. How far away can I run? So like this will set me up for the next thing. <laughs> Trying to break him down. Give him some protection in the meantime. Do your special. Nope. You get a kill. Bowmaster. Rook! This guy has so many kills. Actually, in case for some reason it doesn't work, I'll go here. Well, it won't, technically. So just set him up for this guy. Old one-hander. Fucking! Oh, defeat an enemy with a bow. Oh, apparently that's a. Is that like an achievement? Where's Alette? Shouts Ivor, tearing through the nearest bandit. But you're already hobbling into the deep woods where they disappeared, ignoring the battle raging behind you. In a haze of pain, you start to think. You've lost their tracks. Then you hear Alette screaming in the distance, followed by silence. You tear through the trees. In a small clearing, Alette lies with her back against a tree. Her hands and her clothes are covered in blood. She stares vacantly ahead, unblinking. Beside her is the body of Onef, an arrow buried in his right eye as if placed there by hand. She looks in your direction and then at Onef. I killed him, she says. She, so she like... She like stabbed him with the arrow? Alette, are you... all right? You cringe as much from the pain as the apparent appearance of Alette after her bloody struggle with Anif. No, I'm... 
a little blood on there. I'm not hurt. I, I had no choice. Dad, your, your chest, you're bleeding. Suddenly, she is at your side, putting pressure on the wound. I can, I can fix this. Where's my needle? Ad Adlif, anyone? Ivor, I, I found them. Just as your sight goes back to see Ivan, Ivor and Alette standing over you. Oh, we didn't get to see her covered in blood version. He's going to make it. Your eyes open to the sound of Alette's voice. Normally a wound like that, I only hope I did enough. I'll survive. Dad! Let stops herself from hugging your bandaged chest, pulling your head to her instead. The words come out easier than you expected. Oddleaf? It's a good thing Ivan is here. She's going to pull through, though it was a nasty wound. Yes! She's alive! She's my best- well, she's an okay archer. We managed to kill most of those traitorous sons of bitches, and the rest fled into the woods. There were a lot of people I couldn't save. You did everything you could, Ivan. Nobody expects you to raise the dead. Ivan frowns deeply, putting a hand on his forehead. Why did Onif do this, Rook? He was talking to you right before it happened. Well, he thought... I don't know if he was planning it all along. It Things turned. Utter bastard. All this time we had no idea. Ekil killed a good half dozen of Onif's men by himself. He told me Onif was running Frostviller the whole time. He left Frostviller behind when he saw a better opportunity. Guess that relationship is over. Ekil was always the just the barking dog you put in the yard to find out who your enemies are. It was no accident Onif went after those of us from Skogur. He must have thought with us gone, he'd take the banner and the rest would fall in line. Or at worst, they'd take all the supplies for themselves and leave the rest as dredge bait. We have to be more careful. We can't just let anyone join the caravan anymore. We'll be more cautious. None of this changes the fact that Bellower is out there somewhere following us. That swamp around Seacorn might buy us some time, but we'll need to keep moving. Your body aches all over, but Ivor's right. The road calls. The caravan is already starting to pack up camp. Do we lose supplies in that process? Oh, we're... We get camp time. Well, let's talk to the crazy man. Look who it is. Still not dead. How are things, Rook? I could never guess with you, Ekil. I heard you helped drive off the traitors when Onif attacked us. And it leaves me always wondering, what's your deal? I'm not so hard to understand. Why don't you try asking instead of telling? Why didn't you warn us? Didn't I? How many times did I have to call him a traitor before you got the message? What do you want me to say? Watch out, Onuf's going to murder your whole family? He didn't fill me in on the details. He was always like that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to convince you to off me. But listen, I don't need to know, so keep it to yourself. So why did you stick with him? I don't know, Rook. Family makes you do weird things. Other oh, family. You know oh yeah, it was like a their cousin marriage or something. In-laws, yes. You know what the worst part is? He became kin when he married my sister. She died of a fever one night. But she didn't. She wasn't sick. He killed her. I don't know why he did it. Maybe he just felt like it. I was so furious. I got so angry that I, I wanted him to beg. I could kill him without a second thought, but that, that wasn't enough. I wanted him to feel sick about it. Puke his guts out. And somehow... Somehow that turned into, over time, he never cared, and I gave up and did what he wanted. Don't know how it happened. But when I attacked you in Frostveller, guess I'll have to say that wasn't my idea. Well, you're welcome to stay with us in the meantime. I had no plans to go anywhere. So you're going to let me walk around with my own axe and everything? That doesn't mean I'm not watching you. I can accept that. You're a good man. You consider what to say. I need to get going. And I need to take a piss. You're not the only busy man around here, you know? You shake your head as Ekiel steps away from camp. So a former enemy becomes a friend. 
And oddly, if I need to comfort her as she heals. How is the wound? You notice Oddleaf wince as she rises to greet you. It's doing a lot better. When I saw it happen, I thought for sure, huh? Well, I'm really glad you're... You would have missed me, Rook. She smiles. Without Einvind, that's all you could have done. Instead, you'll have to put up with my crap a little longer. It still aches like you wouldn't believe, though. Oh, maybe you would. Heard you took a stabbing yourself. I guess things could have gone worse. Well, this seems redundant, but how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Sometimes it's lonely since my husband died. I guess I'd say it's more like being alone, even surrounded by all these people. Not like I don't have enough to worry about, though. I'm glad to have a letter around. And you, Rook. What do you think about the caravan? You mean, should we start kicking people out? That's a tough one. Usually I'd be the first to give you a dirty look for suggesting it. On the other hand, I got a sword in my back. Oddly thinks for a long moment before sighing. Don't send anyone away. Just make sure nothing happens to Alette. You think about what to say. I'll let you get some rest, Alette. Okay, thanks. I'll take you up on that. You know, you're welcome to keep me company. When I'm a little more awake, I mean, I'll talk to you later. Was that a proposition? In her weakness of being injured? Perhaps. But we have no... We have zero supplies, so that's not going to work. We have Renown, so we can upgrade somebody. Which is fun. Hogan, Hogan, Hogan. He gets a little more health. Sure, that sounds reasonable. There, he gets his health. He gets an improved ability score thing for 20. He starts becoming a real threat out there. What's his 15? Yeah. I'm okay with that. And this, I can't rest. It'll just be worse if I rest. I need, like, the next town or something. So what is next on our agenda? Oh, there's a town. Dead. Up ahead, a shout a scout. <laughs> a scout shouts, not a shout scouts. Some giant hall, but it's empty. What the fuck? You approach the structure, but recognize none of the markings. The walls seem unsteady at best. Finally, sleeping beneath a roof, you overhear. Several families begin unpacking. Wait. Let's look for clues. When we're left here, may have had a good reason to tell the caravan, but after a few tiring hours of searching for clues, you have no answers. The wasted time is apparent on the clansmen faces. Sleep in the old hall, why not? Tears erupt as people flood into the building. Avaro leans against the supporting pillar. It cracks and brings down a portion of the massive roof, crushing a number of clansmen. Sadly, the rubble is too deep to recover their bodies, and you leave the building behind. Too bad. Oh, it didn't say minus clansmen? That was weird. Next town, though. Maybe we'll get some supplies and not... Yeah, why am I not hemorrhaging... Peoples. Is that a bug? The villagers here are completely oblivious to the destruction that is coming. All we've seen is some dark figures far off, they tell you. Aside from a few young families, they're reluctant to pick up their things and join you. Okay. Well, with this meager amount, we will do that. Um... Armor and rest. That's all. That's pretty good. So I suppose get one rest in. Improved morale. Nothing I can do with the heroes. But we got a few days of supplies.
And then we're already poor morale again. Luckily, we don't have to fight the armies. Oh. As you're nodding off to sleep, shouts of fire pull you back to attention. Flames quickly consume a supply wagon and a few tents. A woman cries out, My boy! and points to a burning tent closest to the outlying varl. Two of the giants are motionless, staring at the spreading fire with terror in their eyes. We'll make our decision in the next episode, so catch y'all then.